Section 2. Licensing Requirements and Process New applicants must apply in person at an MVA full-service office and furnish acceptable documentation to prove age and identity, lawful status, social security number, or proof of ineligibility for an SSN, and two residency documents. At least one of the identity documents presented must include the applicant's full name. Applicants must bring original documents or copies certified by the issuing agency. Photocopies, notarized copies, and documents with alterations or erasures will not be accepted. For a complete listing of acceptable documents, please visit the MBA website. A. Rookie Driver Graduated Licensing System The Rookie Driver Graduated Driver Licensing System, or GLS, applies to all new non-commercial driver's license applicants, regardless of age. The GLS requires new drivers to gain driving experience first with a supervising driver while holding a learner's instructional permit, then alone with certain restrictions while holding a provisional license, and then graduating to a driver's license. B. Learner's Instructional Permit Individuals who have never held a non-commercial Class C driver's license are required to obtain a Type 1 Learner's Instructional Permit. The Type 1 Learner's Instructional Permit is valid for up to two years and must be held for a minimum of nine months before the applicant is eligible for a provisional license. Applicants for a Learner's Instructional Permit must be at least 15 years and nine months of age. If under 18 years of age, the applicant's parent or legal guardian must co-sign the application must present a completed Learner's Permit School Attendance Certification Form, which is DL-300 if under the age of 16, must pass a vision screening and knowledge test. While holding the Learner's Instructional Permit, applicants must complete at least 60 practice hours with a supervising driver and maintain a practice and skills log. At least 10 of the practice hours must occur during the period beginning 30 minutes before sunset and ending 30 minutes after sunrise. The practice and skills log is available on the MVA website. Current driver's license holders who are at least 16 years and 6 months of age and wish to apply for a driver's license of a different class will be required to apply for a Type 2 Learner's Instructional Permit. The Type 2 Learner's Instructional Permit is valid for up to 6 months and must be held for a minimum of 14 days before the applicant is eligible to take the test for the license. C. Provisional License a provisional license is a restricted driver's license issued to new drivers who have never held a driver's license or have held a license for less than 18 months. Applicants who wish to graduate from a learner's instructional permit to a provisional license must be at least 16 years and 6 months of age, must have successfully completed a Maryland-approved driver education program, a listing of approved providers may be found on the MVA website must submit a completed and signed practice and skills log to document a minimum of 60 practice hours with a supervising driver, must have a valid, unexpired Maryland Learner's Instructional Permit, must have held a Maryland Learner's Instructional Permit for at least nine months, must not have any moving violation convictions or have been granted probation before judgment for any moving violations within the previous nine months, and must successfully pass the driving skills test. D. Driver's License a driver's license is the last stage of the GLS. To be eligible for a driver's license, applicants must be at least 18 years of age, must have held the provisional license for at least 18 months, and must not have any moving violation convictions or have been granted probation before judgment for any moving violations within the previous 18 months. Once the provisional license holder meets all requirements, the MBA will automatically convert the provisional license to a driver's license. An attachment card showing the conversion will be mailed to the driver. The card must be carried with a provisional license. E. Cosigner of a minor's application for a license. Minors under the age of 18 must have a parent or legal guardian cosign their application. Proof of relationship is required, such as the applicant's original or certified birth certificate reflecting parents, court documents reflecting legal guardianship, etc. If the applicant is married and proof of marriage is presented, the spouse, if over the age of 18, may co-sign the application. If the applicant has no parent, legal guardian, or spouse, an adult employer of the applicant or other responsible adult may co-sign the minor's application. In this case, documentation such as death certificates of the parents or proof of emancipation is required. F. Cancellation of minor's license on request of cosigner. The cosigner may cancel the minor's license by submitting a written request to the Motor Vehicle Administration's Adjudication Division. The cancellation remains in effect until the minor reaches the age of 18 unless a cosigner who meets the above qualifications cosigns and certifies for the minor. G. Out-of-country licenses. 
Individuals who hold an out-of-country license are required to successfully complete a vision, screening, knowledge test, driving skills test, and an MVA-approved three-hour alcohol and drug education program in order to convert their license to a Maryland license. An up-to-date listing of MVA-approved providers may be found on the MVA website. If the out-of-country license is not in English, it must be accompanied by an international license or a translation in English by an MVA-approved translator. Section 3. Basic Driving Before you drive, both you and your vehicle should be in condition to drive. You must have a valid learner's permit, driver's license, and vehicle registration card in your possession. You should properly adjust your seat and mirrors and ensure that all passengers are wearing a seatbelt. A. Drive defensively A basic rule of driving is that, at all times, the driver of a vehicle on a highway shall control the vehicle as necessary to avoid a crash. Driving a motor vehicle requires that you take the responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Doing so will reduce the risk for yourself, your passengers, and other roadway users. 1. Visual Search Driver Awareness To better prepare for the constant decisions necessary for safe, defensive driving, you must know what is happening around your vehicle. Constantly observing your surroundings to the front, side, and rear of your vehicle helps you to see problems that may cause you to change speed or roadway position. By searching ahead and being ready to change speed or change lanes, you can operate a vehicle more safely and allow yourself time to identify risks. Number 2. Risk Management Operating a motor vehicle is a risky activity. Consider the following steps to manage risk and be a safe, responsible driver. Adjust your speed, position, and direction to respond to roadway conditions, enhance vehicle control, and increase response time. Let other drivers know your intentions by using turn signals, etc. Maintain a safe distance between your vehicle and other roadway users. Do not assume that other drivers will do what they are supposed to do, and use caution at all times. B. Right of way. Right-of-way rules provide drivers with guidance for situations when other drivers or pedestrians are present. These rules determine which driver should yield the right-of-way and the sequence for entering and driving through an intersection or other driving scenarios. Although the right-of-way rules provide a guide to determine who should yield the right-of-way, no one should assume they automatically have the right-of-way. The situation and circumstances at the intersection must always be considered. You are responsible for controlling your vehicle as necessary to avoid a crash. You should yield the right-of-way to the driver who is at or arrives before you at the intersection, drivers in the opposite traffic lane when you are making a left turn, the driver on your right if both of you arrive at the intersection at the same time, drivers on a public highway if you are entering the highway from a driveway or private road, drivers already on a limited access or interstate highway if you are on the entrance or acceleration ramp, the driver on your right at a four-way intersection controlled by stop signs, pedestrian, bicyclist, and other drivers who are still at the intersections. Drivers on the through highway, if you are at a T intersection and you are entering the through highway by either making a right or left turn. Other drivers, if you are approaching an intersection with a yield sign facing you. C. Understanding vehicle speed. The posted speed limit is the maximum legal speed limit you can travel on a road under ideal conditions. Maintaining a safe speed at all times is a responsibility shared by all motorists. It is safest to drive at the same speed that most traffic is moving, up to the maximum speed limit. In fact, traveling at a speed limit lower than the other traffic encourages other vehicles to constantly pass you and increases the chances of a crash. 1. Speeding Excessive speed is one of the most common contributing factors of vehicle crashes. Excessive speed does not save time and often leads to high-risk decision-making. Excessive vehicle speed has severe and oftentimes disastrous effects because it reduces the ability to negotiate curves or maneuver around obstacles in the roadway, extends the distance necessary for a vehicle to stop, decreases the driver's ability to realize and react to a hazard or dangerous situation, increases the risk of crashes because other roadway users and pedestrians may not be able to judge the distance accurately, increases the force and impact in a crash, which more likely results in serious bodily injuries and deaths. Death is eight times more probable in a crash at 60 miles per hour than at 20 miles per hour. The impact of hitting a solid stationary object at 60 miles an hour is, is equal to falling off at a 10-story building. Two, appropriate speed for 
conditions. Drivers must realize and adjust their speeds to adverse conditions. Motor vehicle law requires that motorists drive at reasonable and prudent speed and with regard for existing and potential hazards. You may drive slower than the posted speed limit based on road conditions, but it is illegal to drive any faster than the posted speed limit. Some conditions which require reduced speed for safety include sharp curves or hills where visibility is limited, slippery roads, roads where there may be pedestrians or animals present, shopping centers, parking lots, and downtown areas traffic congestion, narrow bridges and tunnels, toll plazas, schools, playgrounds and residential streets, and railroad grade crossings. Following distance, always maintain a safe distance between you and the vehicle ahead of you. Most rear end collisions are caused by following too closely. A minimum following distance of three to four seconds is recommended under ideal driving conditions. This means it takes you three to four seconds to get to the same reference point to the car ahead of you. To determine if you are following at a safe distance, choose a fixed object ahead, such as a bridge over pass, sign, mile marker, etc. As the car in front of you passes that object, begin counting 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, etc. If you reach 3, 1,000 or greater before your car reaches the same fixed object, you are at least 3 seconds behind the car in front of you and traveling at a safe distance. When you are following vehicles which stop often, such as buses, delivery vans, you should also increase the distance between your vehicle and the one ahead of you to 4 to 5 seconds and possibly more as needed. E. Stopping distance. The distance it takes to stop your vehicle is important to help you choose a safe driving speed. Your actual stopping distance will depend upon many factors, including the length of the time it takes a driver to see and recognize that there is a dangerous situation, the type and condition of the roadway, the condition of the tire treads, the condition of the brakes. F. Lane driving. Your vehicle should be driven in a single lane. Do not switch lanes until you determine if it's safe to do so. You should avoid drifting across lane lines and making lane changes within an intersection. Generally, you should keep your vehicle to the right of the center of the roadway. Unless you are passing another vehicle going in the same direction, there's a traffic signal designated that it's okay to do so, or there's an obstruction that makes it necessary to safely adjust your position. G. Turning. When turning, you should look for signs and signals that give you direction on when you can turn. Plan your turn before reaching the turning point, activate your turn signal in advance to alert other drivers, look behind and to both sides to ensure it is safe to proceed before making a turn, and adjust your speed for the turn. H. U-turn U-turns can be extremely dangerous and are not legal everywhere. If you must make a U-turn, first check to see if U-turns are allowed, and then turn on your left signal, stop, and yield for approaching traffic. When the way is clear, proceed into the outside or right-hand lane traveling in the opposite direction. I. Passing. When passing is permitted, you must estimate the time and space necessary to pass and be sure you can pass without interfering with any other vehicle. Use your turn signal before passing so that you inform other drivers around you of your intentions. Leave plenty of space and go around the other vehicle at a safe distance. See both headlights of the passed vehicle in your rearview mirror before returning to the original lane. Generally, you should pass to the left of the other vehicle. However, it is acceptable to pass on the right if it is safe to do so. You stay on the roadway and... Section 4. Signals, Signs, and Pavement Markings Traffic signals, signs, and pavement markings apply to everyone on the roadway or highway, and they are the primary way of regulating, warning, or guiding traffic on all roadways. Failing to obey the traffic control devices is a major cause of crashes. The driver of a vehicle approaching an intersection controlled by a traffic control device may not drive across private property or leave the roadway for the purpose of avoiding a traffic control device. The only exceptions to obeying all traffic control devices are emergency situations when directions from a police officer or other emergency personnel take priority. Uniform school crossing guards also have the authority to direct traffic at locations near schools. When a traffic signal is not working, you should approach the intersection slowly, being prepared to stop and yield to all other traffic, then proceed only when the way is clear. If the street lights are not functioning, be sure to keep your headlights on to assist you with visibility and to ensure others can see you as well. A. Traffic Signals 1. Steady Red Signal Come to a complete stop at the stop line or if there is no stop line prior to the crosswalk and before entering the intersection and remain stopped as long as the signal is red. Unless a sign prohibits turning on red after coming to a complete stop, you may turn right or you may turn left from a one-way street to another one-way street. When turning on a red signal, you must yield the right away to pedestrians and all other traffic. 2. Steady Yellow Signal 
This means that the signal is changing from green to red. Its purpose is to provide time for approaching traffic to stop safely and to clear other vehicles from the intersection before the signal turns red. If you are too close to the intersection to stop safely, continue through the intersection with care. 3. Steady green signal. Proceed with caution after you have checked first to see that other vehicles have cleared the intersection. When it is safe to proceed, you may enter the intersection to go straight ahead or turn unless a sign or additional signal prohibits the turn. You must yield to pedestrians and vehicles already in the intersection. Steady red arrow signal. If you intend to move in the direction indicated by the arrow, come to a complete stop before reaching the stop line, crosswalk, or intersection. Remain stopped as long as the arrow signal is red. Steady yellow arrow signal. This means that the movement indicated by the arrow is ending. You should slow down and proceed with caution. Steady green arrow signal. Proceed with caution in the direction the arrow points. Remember that you must yield to all pedestrians and vehicles already in the intersection. 7. Flashing red signal. Come to a complete stop at the stop line or if there is no stop line prior to the crosswalk and before entering the intersection. Yield to all other traffic and pedestrians. Proceed when the way is clear. If an alternately flashing red signal is located at a railroad crossing, you must come to a complete stop even if you do not see a train and proceed when the way is clear. Flashing yellow signal. You must slow down and proceed with caution. Flashing red arrow signal. Come to a complete stop before reaching the stop line, crosswalk, or intersection and yield to all other traffic and to pedestrians. Proceed in the direction of the arrow when the way is clear. Lane use signals. These signals are used to control traffic flow by reversing a lane's direction during different hours of the day. The lanes and their directions may be marked with signs, signals, and markings. You must never drive in a lane under a red X signal. You are permitted to drive in a lane under a green arrow signal. A steady yellow X signal means a driver should move out of the lane as soon as safely possible. A flashing yellow X signal or two-way left turn arrows mean that a driver is permitted to use the lane for a left turn. It is likely that you will be sharing the lane with left turning vehicles coming from the opposite direction. B. Traffic Signs Traffic signs use both symbols and word messages to convey information to road users. You should be able to quickly identify traffic signs by their shapes and colors as well as the words, numbers, or the symbols on them. 1. Sign Colors the principal background color of a traffic sign can tell you at first glance what kind of information it has to offer. Red, prohibitive, stop, yield, do not enter, or wrong way. Yellow, general warning of what to expect ahead. White, regulatory, such as speed limit, keep right, and some guide signs. Orange, construction and maintenance work area warning. Green, Guidance information, destinations, distances, and directions. Blue, road user services such as food, gas, and rest area signs. Brown, recreation and cultural interest areas. Fluorescent yellow-green, school, pedestrian, and bicycle signs. Fluorescent pink, emergency traffic incidents. Black, certain regulatory signs such as one-way signs and changeable message signs. 2. Sign Shapes The shape of a traffic sign can tell you as much about the sign's message as its color. In poor visibility conditions such as heavy fog, you may be able to make out only the shape of the sign, which could convey valuable information. Octagon means stop. The octagon, which is eight-sided shape, always means stop. You must come to a complete stop. Triangle meaning yield. Slow down and, if necessary, stop to give the right-of-way to vehicles and pedestrians. Diamond, which means warning. These signs warn you of special conditions or hazards ahead. You may have to slow down, so be ready to take appropriate action. Rectangle, which means regulatory or guide signs. Vertical signs are generally used to give instructions or to tell you the rules of the road. In the horizontal position, the signs generally give directions or information. Pentagon represents school and school crossings. The pentagon, five-sided shape, warns you of school zones and marks school crossings. Pennant, meaning no passing, indicates the start of a no passing zone. Round, which is a railroad warning, used to warn when there's a railroad crossing ahead. Crossbuck, 
Highway Rail and Grade Crossing identifies the location of a railroad crossing. Trapezoid, Recreation and Cultural Interest Areas and Natural Forest Routes. Three, Regulatory Signs. These signs provide notice to road users of traffic laws and they must be obeyed. Eight-sided sign, white letters on red. The stop sign is the only eight-sided sign you will see on the highway. When you come to a stop sign, you must make a complete stop at the stop line. If there is no stop line, stop before entering a crosswalk. If there is no stop line or crosswalk, stop before entering the intersection. Before starting, you must yield right away to other vehicles and pedestrians. You may not proceed until it is safe to do so and until the way is clear to completely pass through the intersection. Three-sided sign, red letters on white. You will see no other signs of this shape on the highway. Slow down as you approach a yield sign. Look to the left and the right. Yield to pedestrians and vehicles. Once you have yielded to vehicles or pedestrians, you may proceed only when it is safe to do so. Rectangular four-sided sign. Rectangular four-sided signs, black on white. These signs are used to regulate traffic. This particular sign tells you the maximum speed limit for the stretch of highway where it is posted. Other regulatory signs, no turn on red, do not pass, do not enter, no left turn, no right turn, no U-turn, left turn only, one way, no turns, no parking, wrong way, bike lane, stay to right of medium, high occupancy vehicles, left turn yield on green, reserved as disability parking space, two-way left turn only. Four, overhead lane use signs. These signs are placed above the roadway to provide direction on the specific use of lanes or to provide destination or directional information. An example of this would be an easy pass sign or an exit sign on an interstate. Five, traffic warning signs. These signs provide notice to road users of a situation that might not be readily apparent. Stop ahead sign, yield ahead sign, signal ahead sign, sharp right turn sign, advisory speed signs, exit ramp advisory speed signs, no passing zone signs, roadway merging signs, road curb signs, sharp turn signs, road curb signs, side road enters ahead signs, T intersection ahead signs, T intersection with railroad crossing just before the T intersection ahead, slippery when wet signs, steep hill signs, flagger ahead signs, detour signs, road work ahead signs, pedestrian crossing signs, lane ends merge left signs, road divides ahead signs, divided roadway ends ahead signs, roundabout signs, school bus stop ahead signs, school crossing ahead signs, pedestrian bicycle crossing signs, trail crossing signs, truck crossing signs, lane end signs, intersection signs. Six, route marker signs. These signs identify the route number and the type of roadway. The interstate sign, the US route sign, and the state route sign. Seven, service information and guide signs. These signs identify the commercial business, product, or service afforded at particular exits. These signs include destination guides, park and ride signs, general service signs, hospital signs, lodging signs, food signs, gas signs, airport signs, and train station signs. Number eight, mile marker signs. These are located every mile on interstate roadways to serve as a location point for drivers when they need assistance. C. Highway pavement markings. Highway markings, used alone or to supplement other traffic control devices, provide important guidance and information to drivers without requiring them to divert their attention from the roadway. You should recognize all the following pavement markings and understand what they mean. Lines may mean extra wide in some locations and or supplemented by reflective markers attached to the road surface to increase the visibility of the lines and give them greater emphasis. 1. Types of line markings. 
Single broken white line. That means separation of lanes where the travel is in the same direction and crossing from one lane to the other is permitted. For an example, lane lines on multi-lane roadways. The single broken yellow line. Separation of lanes where travel is in the opposite directions and where passing with care is permitted. An example, center line on two-lane, two-way roadways. Single solid white line marks the right edge of the roadway and the separation of lanes where travel is in the same direction, but where lane changing is discouraged. Also used in advance of obstructions that may be passed to either side. For an example, right edge lines and lane lines at intersection approaches. The single solid yellow line. These lines marks left edge lines on divided highways, one-way roads, and ramps. Double, side-by-side, -side, solid white. These lines indicate a separation of lanes where travel is in the same direction and lane changing is prohibited. May be used to separate general travel lanes from adjacent preferential lanes, such as HOV lanes. Also may be used in advance of obstructions that may be passed on either side. Double, side-by-side, -side, yellow lines. These indicate separation of lanes where travel is in the opposite directions and passing is prohibited in both directions. Left turn maneuvers across this marking are permitted. Also used in advance of obstructions that may be passed only on the right side. Double, side-by-side, -side, broken yellow lines. These lines mark the edges of reversible lanes. Solid pus broken yellow. Separation of lanes where travel is in the opposite directions and passing is permitted with care for travel adjacent to the broken line, but prohibited for traffic adjacent to the solid line. Used on two-way roadways where passing is permitted only in one direction. Also used to mark edges of two-way left turn lanes. Solid lines on the outside, broken lines on the inside. Single dotted yellow or white lines. These indicate extension of lines through intersections. Color the same as that of the line being extended. Also used to separate turn, entrance, and exit lanes from through lanes. Two, other pavement markings. Other highway pavement markings are critical to safe driving and it is important to recognize and understand them as well. They include A, stop lines. White solid lines that indicate where a vehicle is to stop for a stop sign or a red traffic signal. B, yield lines. Rows of small triangles extending across the lane that indicate where a vehicle is to yield to other vehicles or pedestrians. C. Word and symbol markings. Arrow markings to designate lane use, lane reductions, and direction of travel. Markings used with arrows or other word messages to advise that only the movement indicated may be made from the lane in which the message is shown. School and railroad markings to warn drivers that they are approaching school areas and railroad crossings. 3. Pavement markings for bicycles and pedestrians. Bicycles share most of Maryland's roads with motor vehicles without specific traffic signs or pavement markings. Some roads, mostly in urban areas, do have shared use lane markings, which are indicated on the right that have bike lane written on them or show an indication of a bicycle. These markings alert motorists that bicyclists may be on the road, indicate to bicyclists where to ride, and discourage bicycling in the wrong direction. Some roads have pavement markings that show lanes specifically designed for the exclusive use of bicycles. Solid or broken white lines separate these bike lanes from motor vehicle travel lanes. You may see bike lanes marked with bike lane signs or by a combination of bicycle symbols and arrows. Where parallel parking is allowed, similar lines may separate the bicycle lanes from the parking lanes. Pedestrian crosswalk lanes are white, solid lines that emphasize pedestrian crossing points. Crosswalks may have additional lines between the white, solid lines or in place of the parallel line. Section 5. Driving Situations and Conditions A. Driving in Reduced Visibility Driving in reduced visibility situations is more difficult than normal driving and requires additional concentration and preparation. Low visibility driving can encompass a variety of situations, but it is most commonly associated with nighttime driving and driving in fog. When driving in reduced visibility situations, use the road edge lines or the right side of the road as a guide. You may not see highway signs until too late. Yellow pavement markings should never be on your right side, but always on your left side. Yellow is used to divide opposing roadway traffic and indicate the left travel edge of the roadway. White pavement markings denote the right travel edge of the roadway, as well as traffic traveling in the same direction. Headlight use. 
Knowing when and how to use your headlights is critical for safe driving. Headlights are not only used by drivers to help them see in low visibility situations, they are also helpful in identifying your vehicle to oncoming traffic. Basic Rules for Headlight Usage When driving, you must turn on your headlights anytime there is not enough light to clearly see at least 1,000 feet ahead of your vehicle. Key times to use headlights are nighttime, foggy conditions, and stormy weather. Maryland law requires you turn on your headlight when you're using your windshield wipers in inclement weather. Low beam headlight versus high beam headlight usage. Below are some guidelines on headlight settings. Low beams. Use low beams when operating your vehicle in normal driving situations, such as driving at night, on a highway or a roadway with street lights, driving in fog, rain, snow, etc., entering a tunnel or construction area. While not required by law in all states, this increases visibility to other motorists and construction workers. High beam. Use high beams on open roads which are not lighted by street lights in order to see persons or vehicles ahead. Be aware, you must change the low beam at least 500 feet before meeting oncoming traffic. Change the low beam when following a vehicle at least 300 feet or less. B. Driving at night. Night driving creates a different set of problems for drivers. Driving at night is more hazardous and more difficult than daytime driving, making it more difficult to judge your distance and traveling speed of other vehicles. You can see only as far as your headlights allow. Risks, include at Risks increase at night due to visibility problems, which make it more difficult to clearly see the path of travel and determine the actions of other drivers. Below are some simple suggestions to follow when driving at night. Make sure to use your headlights and follow the suggestions for when to use high beams. When approaching oncoming traffic in opposite lanes, do not stare into the vehicle's headlights, as this will impair your ability to see. Instead, keep your eyes focused on the road in front of you, or slightly to the right of the lane that you are traveling in. For example, the right edge of your lane or the edge of the road. Increase your following distance. This will help prevent a collision in the event the vehicle in front of you needs to stop suddenly. C. Driving in fog. There are some unique circumstances while driving in fog that require additional actions on the part of the driver. Below are some general guidelines and requirements for operating a vehicle in foggy conditions. Reduce your normal driving speed. When you see headlights or another vehicle's taillights ahead, reduce your speed further. You must be prepared to stop quickly. If the fog is so thick that you cannot safely operate your vehicle, pull completely off the road to a safe location and turn on your emergency flashers. Use low beam headlights only and if you have them, special fog lights. D. Driving in inclement weather. Wet roadway surfaces can become slippery, reducing traction and increasing the chances of a crash. These risks increase when road surfaces are covered with snow and ice. Driving in inclement weather requires greater concentration and preparation on the part of the driver. When driving in inclement weather, it is important to take proactive steps to diminish the likelihood of a crash and provide sufficient space in the event your vehicle loses traction. Some simple precautions when driving in inclement weather include Keeping a safe distance. The space needed between you and the car in front of you is much greater on wet roadways than it is in dry conditions. This distance should be even further when the roadway is covered with snow or ice, reducing speed to allow more time to react. Making sure your tires have sufficient tread in accordance with manufacturer recommendations and vehicle guidelines. Avoiding slamming on the brakes, as this may cause your vehicle to skid. If your car does not have an anti-lock braking system, pump the brakes to prevent skidding. Avoid sharp steering or changing speed quickly. Making sure your windshield wipers are in working condition and using your headlights. Special attention for driving on snow and ice. There is no such thing as a completely safe speed on snow and ice. In winter weather, every roadway may be different depending on sun, shade, the amount of salt on the road, and other conditions. Watch ahead for danger spots. Blacktop or asphalt roads can easily hide a thin layer of ice produced by melting and refreezing, sometimes known as black ice, and cause a crash if you're not aware of the danger. Some special considerations when driving in snow and ice are slowing down. No precaution makes it safe for you to drive on ice and snow-covered roadways at normal speeds. Keeping windows and lights clear. Remove all ice and snow from your vehicle before driving. Starting out very slowly, then testing your brakes gently to find out how well you can stop. Start slowing down long before you come to an intersection or a turn. Keeping your gas tank and windshield fluid reservoir full. Keeping an emergency kit in your vehicle that contains flares, flashlight and batteries, a first aid kit, blanket, kitty litter or sand for traction on snow and ice, a small shovel or ice scraper, 
Using change, snow tires, or radial tires on designated snow emergency routes when a snow emergency is declared. Remember, ramps and bridges freeze first before highways and roads. Also, plowed roads may refreeze at night or have icy patches from the daylight thawing of snow. Four-wheel drive vehicles can also slide on ice and snow. Four-wheel drive improves maneuverability, but driving on snow and ice is always dangerous and always unpredictable. Drivers should exercise extreme caution at all times. E. Skidding Traction or adhesion is the grip between the tires and the road surface that allows a vehicle to start, stop, and or change directions. Traction between the tires and the road does not remain constant. For example, sand, gravel, uneven road surfaces, oil slicks and spills, increased speed, or water on the roadway decreases the level of traction. The possibility of skidding or sliding increases with decreased traction. In the event that your vehicle does begin to skid, it is important to know what to do in order to regain control of your vehicle as quickly as possible. Basic rules include release the accelerator or brake pedal, whichever is being applied to regain vehicle balance. Steer in the direction of the skid. Look where you want the vehicle to go. Apply brake pressure only after rolling traction has been re-established. Slowly accelerating may aid in recovery from loss of rear wheel traction. F. Hydroplaning as vehicle speed increases and the amount of water on the roadway increases, vehicles tend to ride on a cushion of water and the tires lose contact with the road. This is called hydroplaning. Hydroplaning can cause a partial or complete loss of control of the vehicle. To prevent hydroplaning, maintain your tires in good condition and lower your speed in response to wet roadways. If you detect a loss of control, take your foot off of the gas and do not apply the brakes. Maintain the direction of the vehicle and allow the vehicle to slow to a manageable speed. G. Railroad crossings. The symbol is yellow, round, with an X in the middle, with two R's on either side. Remember, trains cannot stop quickly. Extra caution should be used when traveling over railroad crossings. When approaching railroad tracks, be alert for other vehicles that may be stopping before the railroad crossing. School buses, commercial buses, and trucks carrying hazardous materials must stop before every highway rail crossing or a train at any time Trains can come from either direction and an approaching train may be closer and traveling faster than it appears. If gates are down or warning lights are flashing, the road is closed, stop and wait until the gates go up and the warning lights stop flashing. After a train passes, look both ways before proceeding. Also, be certain tracks are clear before proceeding. Another train may be approaching on the adjacent track. Never start to cross the tracks unless you can clear the tracks completely. Make sure there is room for your vehicle on the other side of the tracks before proceeding. H. Work Zone Safety You are likely to encounter roadway work zones resulting from construction, maintenance, or utility work along major and secondary roadways. Work zones equal unexpected conditions. New traffic patterns, temporary traffic control devices, narrow lanes, lane shifts, lane and shoulder closures, pavement drop-offs and uneven surfaces, reduced sight distance, detours, slow moving equipment orange is the standard color for work zone activity if you see orange signs when driving stay alert and be prepared for unexpected driving conditions ahead when traveling through a work zone stay alert for temporary traffic control devices these devices define the safe path through a work zone the sign is orange and it says road work ahead or an orange sign with a picture of a flagger work zones are set up with your safety in mind follow these safety rules while traveling in work zones Stay alert, make safety your first priority. Watch your speed and obey posted speed limits and be aware that speed cameras may be in use and speeding fines may be much higher in work zones. Expect the unexpected. Work zone conditions change constantly. Be ready to react. Minimize distractions. Avoid using cell phones, changing radio stations and other distractions. Pay close attention. Obey work zone signs and watch for workers, pedestrians and bicyclists. Drive courteously. Merge with caution. Don't tailgate and don't change lanes unnecessarily. Respect the flagger. Obey the flagger's directions. I. Roundabouts. Approach roads to roundabouts are controlled by yield signs. Entering traffic must always yield to traffic already in the roundabout. Be cautious when approaching the roundabout the same as any other intersection. As you approach the roundabout, reduce your speed. Keep to the right of the island, watch for and yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk, cautiously approach the yield line and wait for an acceptable gap in traffic. Be cautious of other vehicles exiting the roundabout. 
If there is no traffic, you do not need to wait to enter the roundabout. After entering the multi-lane roundabout, keep to your chosen travel lane. When preparing to exit, turn on your right turn signal and move to the outermost travel lanes as you pass the exit prior to where you want to exit. J. Interstate Driving Number 1. Entering the Interstate Interstate and other limited access roadways are usually reached by an entrance ramp or an acceleration lane. The entrance ramp provides access to the highway, and the acceleration lane provides the opportunity to get up to the speed of the traffic already on the interstate or the highway. When entering an interstate, the solid painted lines that divide the entrance and the interstate should not be crossed. 2. Exiting the interstate. Move to the appropriate lane well before reaching the exit. Start slowing down as soon as you enter the deceleration lane and continue slowing to the posted advisory speed for the ramp. If you exit at the wrong place at the interstate, continue until you are off the exit ramp and look for a way to re-enter the interstate. Never stop and back up on any portion of the interstate. 3. Stopping Stopping on traveled portions of the highway is prohibited. Stopping on the shoulder is permitted only when your vehicle is disabled or in other emergencies. If you must stop on the shoulder of an interstate, turn on your emergency flashers to warn other drivers and stay inside your vehicle if you can. The extreme high speed of traffic makes standing or walking along an interstate very dangerous. K. Funeral Processions Vehicles driven in a funeral procession must have headlights turned on and hazard lights flashing in order to be granted right of way. A vehicle driven in a funeral procession facing a red signal must continue through or make a turn at an intersection. Other vehicles, even if they have a green signal, must yield the right of way to the vehicles in the funeral procession until all vehicles in the procession have passed, unless they can safely proceed without crossing the path of the procession. L. Slow Moving Vehicles You may encounter slow moving vehicles on the roadways including bicyclists, horse drawn vehicles, and farm vehicles. Some of these vehicles may have a slow moving emblem, which is a triangle on the back of the vehicle to help warn that they are going 25 miles per hour or less. Be constantly aware of any vehicles that might be traveling at a much slower speed. Adjust the speed and position of your vehicle accordingly. Only pass a slow moving vehicle when it is safe to do so. If you must follow the slower moving vehicle waiting for a safe time to pass, use your emergency flashers to help warn other drivers coming up behind you. Section 6. Dangerous Driving Behaviors a. Alcohol, Drugs, and Driving Drunk driving is a very serious threat to highway safety. Blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is a measurement of the amount of alcohol in a person's blood. Drivers are considered to be driving under the influence of alcohol in Maryland when their blood alcohol concentration is .08 or higher. Any amount of alcohol can affect one's judgment and physical coordination and can lead to criminal charges. If you plan on drinking, plan not to drive. Even though Maryland's limit for drunk driving is .08, a driver's ability to safely operate a vehicle may be impaired at a much lower BAC and may result in criminal charges. For example, an individual's vision, ability to perform simple motor functions, and reaction time may be affected with just one drink and can increase the risk of a collision. The number of drinks consumed is a poor measure of BAC because of the many factors affecting your body's ability to digest alcohol, such as weight, body fat, and how long ago and how much you ate. Factors like tiredness, your mood, and taking certain medications can also make a difference in how alcohol affects your driving ability. It is very difficult to assess your own BAC or impairment. 1. Under 21 Alcohol Restriction If you are not yet 21 years of age, it is not legal for you to be drinking at all. If you're pulled over and you have been drinking, your license will be suspended or revoked. In addition, you could be charged with violating the alcohol restriction on your license. A suspension or revocation for a violation of an under 21 alcohol restriction or any violation of Section 21902 of the Maryland Vehicle Law driving under the influence or impaired by alcohol can result in mandatory participation in the Ignition Interlock Program. Please visit the MVA's website for additional information regarding the Ignition Interlock Program. 2. Controlled Dangerous Substances CDS, Illegal and Prescription Drugs Illegal drugs such as marijuana, heroin, etc., prescription drugs, i.e. codeine, and chemical inhalants can severely impact a person's ability to safely operate a motor vehicle. Drugs have serious harmful effects on the skills required to drive safely. Alertness, concentration, coordination, and reaction time. All drugs can make it difficult to judge distances and react to signals and sounds on the road. Using prescription drugs can also impair your ability to drive. It is important to pay close attention to both prescription and over-the-counter drug label warnings, which instruct individuals to avoid using certain drugs when operating a motor vehicle or heavy machinery. 
Disregarding this recommendation can lead to criminal penalties should your ability to safely operate a vehicle be impaired. 3. Open alcohol container. It is against the law to operate a motor vehicle with an open alcohol container in the passenger area of a vehicle. An open container is any open bottle, can, or package. For example, a six-pack of alcohol with an open or missing bottle or can, or any empty bottles or cans that previously contained alcohol could be considered an open container. The passenger area is any place designated to seat the driver or passenger or any place that is readily accessible to the driver or passenger from their seating position. 4. Transporting children. If you are convicted of a drunk or drug driving offense with a child or children in your vehicle, your fine and jail time could be doubled by a judge in the court. B. Aggressive driving and road rage. Aggressive drivers demonstrate behaviors like speeding, tailgating, failure to obey traffic signals and devices, erratic or improper lane changes, failing to yield the right of way, and improper passing. Some factors that may produce aggressive driving are crowded roads, unexpected delays, rushing, road construction, and stress. Drivers must respect and cooperate with all other road users and conform to specific rules in order to maintain order and avoid crashes. Some tips to reduce the possibility of becoming involved in an aggressive driving incident are allow extra travel time, be patient, be courteous, concentrate on your driving behavior, always signal your intentions, obey all traffic laws, signs, signals, and pavement markings, yield the right of way, avoid competing with other drivers. A good general rule is to treat other drivers and road users like you would want to be treated. C. Distracted driving. Concentration is essential for safe driving. You should be constantly aware of the road and the other vehicles around you. Keep alert and you may be able to foresee a crash and avoid it. Constantly check the position of vehicles behind you as well as those ahead of you. The term distracted driving refers to anything that takes your eyes, hands, or especially your mind away from driving. Distracted driving is the most common contributing factor in police reported traffic crashes. Distractions of any sort cause drivers to miss key visual and audio cues needed to avoid a crash. Many activities contribute to distracted driving. Some of these examples include eating and or drinking, adjusting the radio or a portable music system, adjusting or programming a GPS, attending to children or pets, loose objects moving in the vehicle, talking and texting on a cell phone, smoking, putting on makeup, shaving, reading, interaction with others in the vehicle. Cell phones. Maryland vehicle law prohibits the use of handheld cell phones, including texting while operating a motor vehicle. Although hands-free devices are permitted, drivers should minimize calls and focus on following on safe driving practices. Use your cell phone only in emergencies. If possible, have a passenger make the call. If you must make a call, pull safely off to the road and stop before making the call. Let your voicemail answer incoming calls and keep your telephone conversation short. All learner's permit and provisional license holders under 18 years of age are prohibited from using a wireless communication device, including a hands-free phone, while operating a motor vehicle with the exception of a 911 emergency call. D. Drowsy driving. Not getting enough sleep is another cause of poor driving behavior. Sleepiness slows reaction time, decreases awareness, and impairs judgment just like drugs or alcohol. A lack of sleep can significantly increase your chances of being involved in a crash. Some drivers are at high risk for feeling drowsy while operating a vehicle. Examples include individuals who drive many miles each day, those with sleep disorders, and those taking certain medications. It is important to be aware of the signs of drowsy driving and to take the necessary action to ensure that you do not put yourself and others in a situation that can result in a crash. Below is a list of common danger signs and our general role to combat drowsy driving. Danger signs for drowsy drivers. The following may be indications of drowsiness. Your eyes close or go out of focus. You have trouble keeping your head up. You can't stop yawning. You have wandering, disconnected thoughts. You don't remember driving the last few miles. You missed your exit. You keep driving out of your lane. Your speed becomes variable. If you become tired or sleepy while driving, it is best to rest or change drivers. Being tired dulls your mind and slows down your reactions, making driving hazardous. Section 7. Sharing the Road A. Pedestrian Right-of-Way Pedestrians have the right-of-way at street crossings but must obey traffic control signals. Where a traffic signal is not present, vehicles must stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk, whether marked or unmarked when a pedestrian is on the half of the roadway on which the vehicle is traveling or approaching from the nearest lane on the other half of the roadway. 1. 
blind or deaf pedestrians, or mobility-impaired individuals right-of-way at crossings. Drivers should be especially alert for pedestrians who are deaf, blind, or mobility-impaired. These individuals may have difficulty detecting oncoming traffic and may need extra time to cross the road. The driver of a vehicle shall yield the right-of-way to a blind or partially blind pedestrian carrying a clearly visible white cane or accompanied by a guide dog service animal. A deaf or partially deaf person accompanied by a guide or service dog. A mobility impaired individual using a manual or motorized wheelchair, motorized scooter, crutch, cane, or walker. Two, crossing at crosswalks. This is a yellow sign with a picture of a pedestrian. A crosswalk is a portion of the roadway meant to be used for pedestrian crossings. Crosswalks can be marked on the pavement surface. However, a crosswalk exists across most intersection approaches even if no crosswalk marking is present. Where a traffic signal is in operation, drivers and pedestrians must obey the traffic signal. A driver may not pass any vehicle that has stopped at a crosswalk. Drivers must yield to pedestrians when turning on a steady green signal and when making a turn after stopping when turning on a red signal is permitted. B. Emergency Vehicles Authorized emergency vehicles such as police cars, ambulances, and fire engines have the right of way when they are using their audible or visual signals, for example, sirens and flashing lights. Immediately after you see or hear an emergency vehicle approaching that is using its signals, you must move as close as possible to the edge of the roadway, clear of any intersection, and remain stopped until the emergency vehicle has passed. If you are proceeding in the same direction as an emergency vehicle using its signals, you may not pass the emergency vehicle unless the emergency vehicle stops or you are otherwise directed by a police officer. If you are approaching an emergency vehicle that is using its visual signals and is stopped on the roadway, you must pull into the far lane, if possible, or slow down to a safe speed for the conditions. C. Large trucks. Watch for turning trucks. Trucks make wide turns at intersections and require additional space. When making a right turn, large trucks will often move left prior to making the turn. Car drivers may see this as a lane change to the left and attempt to pass on the right. Passing any truck on the right can be risky. Wait to assess the truck driver's intent before passing. If a truck is stopped at an approaching intersection, never attempt to cut in along the right side as the truck driver begins their turn. You could find yourself caught between the turning truck and the curve. When passing a truck that is going in the same direction, pass quickly to resume visibility and change lanes only when you can see both of the truck's headlights in your rearview mirror. Many intersections are marked with stop lines. Crowding the intersection by stopping beyond the stop line can leave your vehicle exposed to trucks attempting to turn from the cross street. Never cut in front of a truck. Fully loaded trucks can weigh more than 80,000 pounds and take the length of a football field to stop. Most cars weigh only about 2,000 pounds. No zones. There are four large blind spots around trucks where cars disappear from view and the driver cannot see you. Side no zones. Trucks and buses have blind spots on both sides. If you cannot see the driver's face in the side view mirror, he or she cannot see you. If the truck changes lanes, you could be in trouble. The right side blind spot runs the length of the trailer and extends out three lanes. Rear no zones. Avoid tailgating. Unlike cars, trucks and buses have huge no zones directly behind them. The truck or bus driver cannot see your car back there. If the truck or bus breaks suddenly, you have no place to go. Front no zones. Do not cut in front too soon after passing a truck or a bus. Truck and bus drivers need nearly twice the time and room to stop as cars. Look for the entire front of the truck in your rearview mirror before you pull in front, and then do not slow down. Backing up no zones. Never cross behind a truck that is backing up. Hundreds of motorists are killed and injured each year by ignoring trucks that are backing up. Truck drivers do not have a rearview mirror and may not see you cutting in behind them. Remember, if you cannot see a truck's mirrors, the truck driver cannot see you. D. School Vehicles Drivers are to stop for school vehicles. If a school vehicle has stopped on a roadway and is operating the alternately flashing red lights, the driver of any vehicle following or approaching the school vehicle shall stop at least 20 feet from the rear of the school vehicle if approaching the school vehicle from its rear or at least 20 feet from the front of the school vehicle if approaching the school vehicle from its front. The driver of any vehicle following or approaching the school vehicle may not proceed until the school vehicle resumes motion and the alternately flashing red lights are deactivated. This does not apply to the driver of a vehicle on a physically divided highway. E. Motorcycles Drivers of cars must always be alert for motorcycles, as their size makes them very difficult to see. Always remain alert and check frequently to make sure that a motorcycle is not traveling next to you. 
You need to be especially alert for motorcycles when turning at intersections and when pulling out from a side road or driveway. A motorcycle is entitled to use the entire lane. Because the motorcycle is very maneuverable, the operator may move from side to side within the lane to avoid obstacles. Allow ample room for the motorcycle when passing and remember it is against the law to pass a motorcycle within the same lane. Maintain a safe following distance at all times. F. Bicycles. Right of way. By Maryland law, bicycles are vehicles. Bicycles are authorized users of the roadway and have rights of way and the same duty to obey all traffic signals as motorists. But bicycles are less visible, quieter, and do not have the protective barrier around them. Motorists should drive carefully near bicyclists. Even a slight mistake can result in a serious injury or even a death. Expect to find a bicyclist on all types of road, except interstate highways and toll facilities, at all intersections and roundabouts, in all types of weather, and at all times of the day and night. Bicyclists may ride out into the travel lane for their own safety due to narrow roads, or to avoid obstacles or pavement hazards. On roads without shoulders, or cars parked along the right side, often the safest place for a bicyclist to ride is in the center of the lane. In Maryland, a bicyclist may use the full lane even while traveling substantially below the speed of traffic if the lane is too narrow for a car to safely pass a bicycle within the lane. Before opening a car door, check for bicyclists who may be approaching from behind. Following a bicyclist. As you approach a bicyclist, slow down. Avoid honking your horn. Bicyclists can usually hear an approaching vehicle and loud noises can startle bicyclists, causing a crash. Bicyclists do not have turn signals, so bicyclists use hand and arm signals to alert you of their intentions. Do not follow a bicycle too closely. Remember that small holes, glass, or other hazards can be particularly dangerous to bicyclists. Bicycles can stop and maneuver quickly, so a bicyclist may swerve to change speed to avoid a road hazard that a motorist cannot see. Pass with care. Give bikes at least three feet. Pass a bicyclist as you would any slow-moving vehicle. Be prepared to slow down, wait until oncoming traffic is clear, and then allow at least three feet of clearance between your car and the bicyclist when passing. The same three-foot clearance applies if you are passing a bicycle in a bike lane, on the shoulder, or in the same lane as your car. After passing a bicyclist, check your mirror to ensure that you have completely passed the bicycle with enough room before you move back to the right. Use caution at intersections, bridges, and driveways. Always assume that bicyclists are traveling straight through an intersection unless they signal otherwise, and yield the bicyclist just as you would any other vehicle. Bicyclists often ride on sidewalks and trails, so look both ways before crossing a sidewalk or trail. A bicycle may come from an unexpected direction. Never make a right turn from a through lane immediately after passing a bike on a shoulder or a bike lane. Try to avoid any chance that a bicycle will be on your right or in your right blind spot when you turn right. Before starting a right turn, move as far to the right as practical within the bike lane, shoulder, or right lane. Yield to bicyclists as to any other vehicle proceeding straight. Do not turn left immediately in front of a bicycle. Experienced bicyclists often ride very fast, as fast as 35 miles an hour, and may be closer than you think. If you are passing a left-turning vehicle by moving right, first look closely for bicyclists. Whenever a travelway narrows for a bridge, park cars, or other obstructions on the right, be prepared for a bicycle riding on the shoulder to merge left into the main lane of traffic. Driving at night. If you see a dim reflective object at night, do not assume that it is outside of the roadway. It could be a bicycle in the main travel lane. Bicyclists sometimes avoid shoulders at night when cars are not present because tree branches, potholes, and debris, even the edge of the pavement, are difficult to see. Your headlights may provide enough light for the bicyclist to safely move into the shoulder for you to pass. But it takes longer at night. When approaching a bicycle, use your low beam headlights. Watch for children. Children on bicycles are sometimes unpredictable. Expect the unexpected and remember they are small in stature and may be hard to see. Young bicyclists are especially likely to make surprising changes in direction. Be aware of bicyclists entering the roadway from driveways or near parked cars. Strictly observe speed limits in school zones and residential areas to allow time to see and safely share the road with young bicyclists. G. Mopeds and Scooters All traffic laws apply to drivers of mopeds and motor scooters. Drivers of cars must always be alert for mopeds and scooters as their size makes them very difficult to see. Mopeds and scooters may be ridden on any roadways where the posted maximum speed limit is 50 miles per hour or less. They may be riding side by side or alone and on the roadway or on the shoulder. Generally, they are to be ridden as near to the right side of the roadway as practical and safe. 
be especially cautious of mopeds and scooters at intersections when they may be turning or going straight through the intersection and on narrow roadways with little room for pass. Section 8. Crashes and Traffic Stops A. Crashes If you are involved in a crash where someone has been injured, including a pedestrian or bicyclist, you must immediately stop at the scene of the crash. Call 911 immediately to get help with police, fire, and ambulance. Identify the number of people involved, the type of injury, and the location of the crash. Do not move the vehicles. If there are no injuries but your vehicle cannot move, call 911 immediately, give the location of the crash, advise there are no injuries but you need police assistance. Use your emergency flashers or flares to warn oncoming traffic. Be patient and do not attempt to cross the roadway or stop traffic. Make sure you stay away from traffic. If there are no injuries and your car can move, stop the vehicle as close as possible to the scene of the crash without obstructing traffic more than necessary. If no one has been injured, move it off to the roadway to ensure your safety and that of other motorists and prevent traffic backups. Exchange important information, name, address, phone number, license plate number, and state driver's license numbers, vehicle, make and model, and insurance information. Ask witnesses to leave their names, addresses, and phone numbers. Note collision location, date and time, number of vehicles involved, weather conditions, and road conditions. Note any damages to the vehicle. Record the facts of how the crash happened. Remember, you must always call the police when someone has been injured, a car cannot move, a driver appears to be under the influence, a driver does not have a license, a driver tries to leave the scene without providing the proper information, public property has been damaged. If you strike and injure a domestic animal, you are required to immediately notify the police. If you strike an unattended vehicle or other unattended property, you are required to stop the vehicle as close as possible to the scene of the crash without obstructing traffic more than necessary. Attempt to find the driver or owner of the property to notify and provide your information. If the driver or owner of the property cannot be found, leave notice and your information in a conspicuous, secure location. B. Traffic Stops Law enforcement officers issue written traffic citations to persons who are charged with violating the Maryland Motor Vehicle Law. You must follow the directions of the officer at the time of the stop or you may be subject to arrest. If you are stopped by a police officer, pull off to the side of the roadway as far away from traffic as possible. Turn on your flashers. Turn off your engine and radio and roll down your window so you can communicate with the officer. Stay in the vehicle and keep your seatbelt fastened. Keep your hands in plain view, preferably on the steering wheel. Do not make any movement that will make the officer think you are hiding or reaching for something. If the officer issues you a citation, do not argue with the police officer about the citation. You will have a chance to make your case if you go to court. Section 9. Other Restrictions, Violations, and Penalties A. Restrictions The MVA is authorized to impose certain restrictions on driver's license to ensure the safe driving of a motor vehicle by the licensee. Operating a motor vehicle in violation of restrictions is a serious offense and could result in, in the withdrawal of the driving privilege. Additional restrictions can be also imposed based on your licensing status. Graduated license holders under 18 years of age are subject to the following additional driving restrictions. Seatbelt restriction. Provisional license holders are prohibited from operating a motor vehicle if the driver and each passenger are not restrained by a seatbelt or child safety seat regardless of age or seating position. Passenger restriction. Provisional license holders during the first five months, 151 days of their provisional period, are not allowed to have passengers under the age of 18 unless accompanied by a qualified supervising driver or the passengers are direct family members. Direct family members can be a spouse, daughter, son, stepdaughter, stepson, sister, brother, stepsister, or stepbrother of the provisional license holder or a relative of the license holder who lives at the same address. Nighttime Restriction Provisional license holders are allowed to drive unsupervised from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. only if the licensee is driving to, from, or during the licensee's employment. Driving to and from an organized volunteer program. Driving to or from an official school activity or driving to or from an opportunity to participate in an athletic event or related training session. Wireless device restriction. All provisional license and learner's permit holders are prohibited from using a wireless communication device, including a hands-free phone, while operating a motor vehicle, with the exception of a 911 emergency call. Notice to applicant. Implied consent. 
In Maryland, any person who drives or attempts to drive a motor vehicle on a highway or any private property used by the public in general consents to take a test to determine alcohol concentration or a test to determine the concentration of a drug or controlled dangerous substance. A police officer who has reasonable grounds to believe that an individual is driving while impaired by drugs, alcohol, or a controlled substance may have a drug recognition expert request that person to submit a blood test. A person may not be compelled to take a drug or alcohol test. However, if upon receipt of a certified statement from a police officer that a test was refused, the MVA will impose the suspension period for a test refusal. The MVA will suspend the license of any driver who submits to the test and is determined to have the test result of 0.08% alcohol concentration or higher. Obtaining a false or forged identification card, driver's license, or learner's instructional permit. The law states that if you attempt to secure a false or fraudulent identification card, learner's instructional permit, or driver's license, you may be subject to a fine and or imprisonment under federal and state law. It is a violation of the law to misrepresent your age to purchase, possess, or acquire alcoholic beverages. In addition to the above penalties, your driver's license may be suspended. D. Administrative Actions the MVA may suspend, revoke, refuse, or cancel a license for violations of motor vehicle laws. The MVA will send a notice to the individual's address of record to advise of a proposed administrative action, the reason the action is being taken, and what steps the individual may take to either have the action modified or not imposed. In most cases, an administrative hearing may be requested to show cause why administrative action should not occur. Maryland Motor Law requires the surrender of any license which is suspended, revoked, refused, or canceled. Credit for the term of the suspension, revocation, or period of restriction will only begin after the license is received by the MBA. 1. Suspension of a driver's license. The suspension of a Maryland driver's license is the temporary withdrawal of the privilege to operate a motor vehicle. In some cases, the MBA may determine to grant the individual a restricted driver's license. The restricted driver's license allows the individual to operate a motor vehicle only for a specific purpose, for example, employment or educational purposes. 2. Revocation of a driver's license. The revocation of a Maryland driver's license is the withdrawal of the privilege to operate a motor vehicle until the MVA determines the individual can safely operate a motor vehicle again. Unlike the suspension period that ends at a specific time, a revocation has a minimum waiting period to apply and is subject to denial by the MVA. 3. Cancellation of driver's license. A canceled driver's license means that the driving privilege is terminated. The MVA may cancel a driver's license if it is determined that the licensee was not entitled to be issued the license, failed to give required or correct information on the license application, or committed fraud in making application or obtaining the license. A parent can also request the cancellation of the driver's license of a minor child. See Section 2 F. E. Sanctions. Provisional licensees must hold a valid provisional license for an assigned conviction-free period before becoming eligible for full license status. Convictions or probation before judgment PBJ for moving violations while holding a provisional license will require the completion of a driver improvement program and or suspension or revocation of the driver's license followed by the imposition of an employment and education only restriction on the driver's license. If the licensee is under 18 years of age and receives a moving violation with a provisional license, then becomes convicted of or granted probation before judgment for the violation, the following sanctions do apply. The first offense requires the licensee to complete a driver improvement program. A second offense will result in a 30-day suspension of the driver's license, privilege followed by an employment and education-only restriction period for 90 days. A third offense will result in a 180-day suspension of the driver's license and privilege, require attendance at a driver improvement program designated for young drivers, and imposition of an employment and education-only restriction for the period of 180 days. A fourth or subsequent offense will result in the revocation of the driver's license and privilege and will require all licensing tests to be successfully passed when reinstated. If the provisional license holder is 18 years of age or older and receives a moving violation with a provisional license, then becomes convicted of or granted a probation before judgment for the violation, the following sanctions apply. The first offense requires the licensee to complete a driver improvement program. A second offense will result in a 30-day suspension of the driver's license and privilege. 
A third or subsequent offense will result in up to a 180-day suspension or revocation of the driver's license and privilege. The above sanctions will be imposed in addition to any of the sanctions that apply as a result of the convictions. Also, each conviction or probation before judgment for a moving violation, an offense, will automatically require the licensee to begin a new 18-month conviction-free period. F. Use of disability parking spaces, license plates, and placards. Substantial fines may be imposed for illegal use or abuse of disability parking spaces and disability license plates and placards. Citations may be issued for the following violations. Parking in disability parking spaces unless you have a disability license plate or placard issued by the MVA and the person who qualified for the privilege is either operating or being transported in the vehicle. Parking in front of or blocking any part of the curb cut even if you have a disability license plate or placard. Parking on any part of an, uh, an access aisle next to a disability parking space even if you have a disability license plate or placard. Using a disability plaque after its expiration date. Using a disability license plate or placard without the person with a disability present and being transported and without proper identification. Any fraud or misrepresentation when applying for a disability license plate or placard. Additional information regarding disability parking may be obtained by visiting the MVA website. Section 10. Other important information. A reportable medical conditions. A. Reportable medical conditions. A diagnosis of any of the following disorders must be reported to the MVA Driver Wellness and Safety Division. This may not prevent you from receiving a license. A packet of medical forms will be sent to you, including a form for your physician to complete. The information will be reviewed and evaluated by the Driver Wellness and Safety Division and or the Medical Advisory Board. Reportable medical conditions include cerebral palsy, diabetes requiring insulin, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, irregular heart rhythm or heart condition, stroke or TIA, a mini stroke, alcohol dependence or abuse, drug or substance abuse or dependence, loss of a limb or limbs, traumatic brain injury, TBI, bipolar disorder, schizophrenic disorders, panic attack disorder, impaired or loss of consciousness, fainting, blackout or seizure, disorder which prevents a corrective minimum visual acuity of 2070 in at least one eye and field of vision of at least 110 degrees, Parkinson's disease, dementia, for example, Alzheimer's disease, or multi infarcid dementia, sleep disorders, for example, narcolepsy or sleep apnea, autism. B. Supervising driver, requirements and responsibilities. Maryland learner's permit holders may drive only those vehicles or class of vehicles specified on the learner's permit and then only while accompanied by a supervising driver who is at least 21 years of age is currently licensed for at least three years in Maryland or another state to drive vehicles of the class being driven by the holder of the permit, is seated beside the holder of the learner's permit unless the vehicle is a motorcycle. C. Organ Donor Maryland residents can give the gift of life and health to somebody else by donating organs or tissues after death. Anyone 18 years of age or older may be an organ donor. Minors who are at least 16 years old may add a donor designation if a parent or guardian consents in writing. Look for the statement on your license application or renewal notice that states, please check if upon your death you desire to help others by becoming an organ donor. By checking yes, you authorize all necessary personal information to be forwarded to the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and maintained by the Maryland Organ Donor Registry. Additional information on the organ donor program may be found on the MBA website. D. Register to vote. The National Voter Registration Act of 1993, often referred to as Motor Voter, is a federal law that requires the MVA to provide its eligible customers the opportunity to apply to register to vote or updating voting information during the driver's license or photo identification ID card transaction. E. Insurance Requirements All motor vehicles registered in Maryland must be insured by a company licensed in Maryland. Vehicle owners must have their vehicles insured for personal injury and property damage liability in amounts required by law. See the MVA website for additional information regarding specific amounts of, of required insurance. F. Seatbelt Law Maryland Motor Law requires that the driver and all front seat passengers next to the door wear seatbelts. In addition, any individual under the age of 16 must wear a seatbelt or be restrained in a child safety seat regardless of seating position. G. Child Safety Seats 
All children under age 8 must ride in an appropriate safety seat unless the child is 4 foot 9 inches or taller or weighs more than 65 pounds. The restraint must be used in accordance with the child safety seat and vehicle manufacturer's instructions. Child safety seats include car seats, booster seats, or federally approved child safety devices. If you are unable to purchase or obtain a child safety seat, you may contact Kids in Safety Seats, KISS, at the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene at 1-800-370-SEAT. KISS coordinates loaner programs in various areas of the state that rent car seats or booster seats at a minimal cost to families who cannot afford to purchase them. Seat availability may vary per site. H. Airbags Airbags are important safety devices that provide protection in crashes. For best protection, they must be used in combination with the vehicle's lap and shoulder belt. Children in rear-facing car seats should never ride in the front seat of a vehicle with a passenger airbag. Sit as far back from the steering wheel as practical. Try to maintain 10 to 12 inches from the steering wheel to the chest. Children under the age of 13 should ride buckled up in the rear seat in an appropriate child safety seat or seat belt. Pregnant women should place the lap portion of the seat belt under the abdomen as low as possible on the hips and across the upper thighs and the shoulder belt over the rounding of the belly. I. Braking with Anti-Lock Braking Systems ABS Anti-Lock Braking Systems ABS are designed to prevent your wheels from locking up and allow you to steer. Whenever the vehicle computer detects that one or more wheels are locking, ABS begins to pump the brakes at a much faster rate to avoid locking. When the ABS engages, you may hear a rumble from the brakes and the brake pedal will vibrate under your foot. You should refer to your vehicle's owner's manual for more information regarding anti-lock braking systems. J. Wearing of headsets, earphones, and earplugs are prohibited. Earplugs, headsets, or earphones attached to a radio, portable audio device, CD player, or other audio device that are in or cover both ears are prohibited while driving a motor vehicle. Hearing aid devices are acceptable. K. Parallel parking. Parallel parking is required of all individuals applying for their original Class C driver's license. This maneuver provides a demonstration of the use of the applicant's visual skills, judgment of space, use of mirrors and turn signals, steering, braking, and acceleration control, etc. Applicants are asked to park in a parallel parking space 25 feet by 6 feet within 12 inches of the curve. L. Reverse two-point turn. Required of all applicants applying for their original Class C driver's license. This maneuver provides a demonstration of the applicant's visual skills, backing skills, judgment of space, use of mirrors and turn signals, steering, braking, acceleration control, and general driving skills. The turn must be completed in a 10 foot by 20 foot space. M. Rules and tips for bicyclists. Like motor vehicle operators, bicyclists have both rights and responsibilities for operating on the road safely. Do your part by being a safe and courteous bicyclist. Obey the rules of the road. Ride straight and single file in a predictable manner. Plan ahead and allow time to maneuver around road hazards and to negotiate with traffic and open car doors. Yield to pedestrians and all traffic signals and signs. Ride with traffic. Always ride on the right side. Use caution if passing other traffic on the right. When approaching an intersection, use the appropriate lane for the direction you intend to travel, left, straight, or right. Signal all your turns. Look before you make a lane change or turn. Signal safety in advance using one of these signals. For a left turn, extend your left arm. For stopping, point your left arm down. For a right turn, the left arm should go straight up. And for an alternate right turn, right arm straight out. Make left hand turns safely. You may turn left as a vehicle one by moving into the left side of the travel lane or left turn lane or cross like a pedestrian. Two, by stopping, dismounting, and walking across crosswalks. Be prepared for slick road conditions. When braking in rain or snow, allow extra distance to stop and look for pavement markings and utility covers, which may become slippery. Be visible. Use lights at night. When riding at night, Maryland state law requires a white headlight on the front and a red reflector on the back visible for at least 600 feet. In addition, it is recommended that you wear bright clothing in daytime and reflective clothing for night riding. Bicycle equipment. Helmets are required for operators or passengers of bicycles under the age of 16. They are, however, strongly recommended for all operators or passengers regardless of age. By law, all bicycles must be equipped with brakes capable of stopping from a speed at 10 miles an hour within 15 feet on dry, level, clean pavement. 
a white beam headlight visible at a distance of 500 feet, and a red rear reflector visible at a distance of 600 feet if ridden at night or during unfavorable lighting conditions. A safety seat firmly secured to the bicycle or a trailer must be used if traveling with a small child. A bicycle basket, rack, or bag must be used in transporting small articles so that both hands may be kept on the handlebars.